Now I'm going to show you a couple of real world examples of how the merge operations work together and why you want to approach them a specific way. So in this case, we have a image here, and this is kind of the traditional image where it comes in and it has no alpha. And then we have another image where say we want to, we want to take these mountains and we want to apply them back here where the sky is. So these are our two images that we want to merge together. So if you just merge these straight together with an over, you can see that neither is solid and you're getting this semi-transparent and everything's kind of adding together and it looks a little strange. It's definitely not what you're expecting. So this is a case where you would want to give yourself an alpha and make sure it's solid. So we'll add one to our B side and then we'll add one to our A side. So now you can see that we have our A input here and our B input here. And when we merge those together, now we're seeing that A on top of the B, which is our expected behavior. So in this case, we're gonna use a couple other op merge operations. So we have our mountain here that we wanna replace, but we don't need the whole image and we wanna do a little work on it. So what we've done is we've created a roto shape and now we're just grabbing a section of the mountain that we wanna use. So we wanna use another merge and in this case we wanna use the mask operation. I'll turn that on. So now you can see the mask operation is cutting out the image here with the shape we've created here. And this gives us this result. And when, when, it, when I talked about bounding box, this, is, this dotted line is the bounding box. And you can see that it is now smaller than the format. And that's because these are the only pixels that actually have data. And Nuke is only processing those pixels. It's not processing the full format. It's only processing what's in the bounding box. Okay, so now we have our mountains. And so now we can look at it on top. Well, that's obviously not where we want them to be. So we'll use a transform tool and we'll move them over to our location we want. Now, as you can see here, we have a little bit of an issue and now that they're sitting on top and we can't really use under because under will just put it behind the other image completely. So we need to create another roto shape. In this case, we've created a shape that outlines our signboard here, our outhouse and some of the foreground. So if we view this and then we turn on this shape, you can see now it has cut out those pieces. So now we have a little sliver and now we're again using over. So now you can see that mountain is tucked in behind our sign in our outhouse. And one of the other shortcuts I use all the time is the D key. D stands for disable. And that allows you to turn nodes on and off really easily. So in this case, when I disable the merge, you can see the work we've added. So that's one really quick comp of how you would use merges and multiple different kinds of merges to achieve what you're looking for and using the alpha to manage that appropriately. We have the same situation here. So say we have, we have this image and I've done a frame hold just to keep it in one spot for us. And we have an image, you know, say we want to replace the sign on this. So in this case, we're replacing this sign and you can see that it's really bright, but I also want to show you if you don't have an alpha, what happens here. So say this had an alpha, this is actually plused. So when you bring your gamma down or your gain down in your viewer, you can see that these are now plus together instead of one being on top of the other. And that's a function of, you know, giving our image file, I'm giving it a black alpha so that it represents something that has an alpha channel, but has no data in it. Something else to be aware is certain tools like transforms and corner pins, they have an option that whenever you use them and the image doesn't have an alpha by default, it will apply an alpha to that frame or you know to that format. So that's why this actually works when we merge them together without manipulating the alpha on the original file. All right, and this wraps up this section.